As promised, today we're going to bring you part two of our Fortifying Facebook series. Again, part one dealt with security. If you haven't watched that video, it's about five minutes or so. You should go ahead and check it out. Part two, today's, is going to be another five or so minutes talking almost exclusively about privacy, though, again, there is naturally a bit of interplay between the two subjects and definitely a lot of interplay between them in the settings pages. So go ahead and go over to your settings pages, and we'll start with privacy. In reality though, my very favorite privacy setting isn't actually in the privacy settings page at all. It's in the security settings page. The most private thing you could possibly do right now is to deactivate your account. However, I do understand that there are a lot of us out there that either need to or simply want to have a Facebook account, and that's perfectly okay. So we're gonna go ahead and not delete our account. This right here is another feature I really like. So Facebook will let you download a copy of your Facebook data. So if you just go ahead and click this link, you can download a copy of your data profile from Facebook. So it's interesting to see exactly what Facebook stores about you. Running through these privacy subcategories, my philosophy is going to be to maintain a high level of privacy, but not to become antisocial. So who can see your future posts? This is a perfect example of that. The best option is obviously to say, only me. I only want me to see my future posts. However, I think that you should be very careful about who you accept friend requests from as a principal on Facebook. And every you know month, couple of weeks, whenever, just go through your friend list and unfriend people. If they're posting annoying or spammy content, unfriend them. Maybe you've forgotten who someone is, unfriend them. If you do that, then you should feel confident posting stuff so that your friends can see. The other important thing to note is that when you actually post something, you can decide who you want to see it. So, I hate the Atlanta Braves. But you can keep that so that only you can see it, because I don't want to offend any of my Atlanta Braves friends. So you post that. Now, the thing that you should know is once you've changed that inline who can see what setting, it changes it for default for the rest of your posting. So then you'd want to go back, change it back to friends. That won't change past posts though. We'll get to that in a minute. You can also review all the posts that you're posted in, or that you've posted. So I see this I hate Atlanta Braves. I'm not showing it to anybody. I don't really hate the Atlanta Braves. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now I see this, man, that sandwich was delicious. I obviously want everyone to know that that sandwich was delicious. So I make that the public setting. The last thing I want to talk about here is you can limit the audience for old posts on your timeline. Now it sort of seems like that's what we were just doing, but the setting is a touch different. So if this is your first time you've ever thought about security or privacy on Facebook, this might be a good idea. If you go back and review all your posts, you might see that all of your posts from when you started a Facebook account until now are publicly viewable. So what this is going to do is it's going to take all of those posts and it's going to change them so that only your friends can see them. All right, next, who can send you friend requests? I'd love for there to be an option here that said no one can send you friend requests, because that would mean that only I could send people friend requests, but there, unfortunately it's not. Now, everyone is a bad option. That really opens you up to people who are gonna be sending you spam requests, phishing attempts. The better way to go is friends of friends. Now, again, don't be afraid to reject a friend request. It's very important. I get friend requests all the time from people I sort of kind of know and people I don't know at all, and I just delete them outright, and I don't even think twice about it. Another important setting here is whose messages do I want filtered into my inbox? I believe the default setting is basic filtering, which if you leave basic filtering, you're gonna get spam messages from people. I recommend strict filtering. You can still see those messages. There's a way to see the messages that have been filtered out. So if you want to, you can go in and check them. But Facebook does a pretty good job of, of blocking out the messages that aren't from anyone you know. Let's jump through these real fast. Who can look you up using the email address you provided? I mean, friends is gonna be the best option here. Uh, it'd be great if no one could, but then again, they're gonna have to know your email address to look you up that way anyway. Who can look you up using the phone number you provided? Again, friends is the best option. 
And then this last feature is actually probably the most important. Do you want other search engines to link to your timeline? Now this is the primary search engine. Facebook's internal search engine is going to be able to find you regardless. The other search engines they're referring to are your Googles, your Bing, your DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you use. So the default actually is to have this box checked. I definitely recommend unchecking it. I don't want my timeline to be indexed on any search engines as far as I can control it. All right, now we're going to run through the timeline and tagging settings section, which is another pretty dense set of features. So who can post on your timeline? Again, you, you could make it so that only you could post on your timeline, but that is a bit antisocial. So we'll go with friends. This is actually a really interesting feature. It lets you review posts that anyone tags you in before they appear on your timeline. So this way, if someone tags you in something, you'll get a notification, you can check it out, and you can either approve it or decline it before it ends up on your timeline. So it really lets you control what others are, are tagging you in. So we'll go ahead and enable that. This is another interesting feature. So this is what my public or what my profile is going to look like to the public. So you know I'm not really showing off much. They're not seeing any any posts or anything. Even if you go to photos, they can click on the photos, but they aren't going to see anything. All right, back to the settings. Who can see the posts you've been tagged in on your timeline? So again, you could go with only me, but you've really already nipped this in the bud up here where you said that you want to review anytime you're tagged before it goes on your timeline. So if you're reviewing your tags, I have to assume that you don't mind if your friends are seeing them. You can also control who can see what others post on your timeline. Now this is a case where maybe you do want to choose only me because your friends might be posting stuff on your timeline that's predominantly intended for you to see. I don't have a problem with my friends posting on my timeline, so I'll choose my friends. That's really up to you. Again, if you choose your friends wisely and all of your friends are friends, then who cares if anyone sees what they see there? But we're not going to judge you no matter what you choose. All right, you can also review tags people add to your own posts before the tags appear on Facebook. This basically is taking what we did up here one step further. So before we set it so that you could review posts you're tagged in before they show up on your timeline. This is going to let you review posts in which you're tagged before they appear on Facebook at all. So this is definitely a feature you're going to want to enable. Again, you're already deciding when anything that you're tagged in, when and if anything you're tagged in, ever ends up on Facebook in the first place. So what this setting does when you're ta tagged in a post, who do you want to add to the audience if they aren't already in it? So you're already approving it to be seen by all of your friends. Of course, you could say only me because this is something that someone else has tagged. But if you really think about it, it's almost as if you're tagging it because you're ultimately deciding that it ends up on Facebook in the end. So I would go with friends. I feel comfortable doing that. This is another pretty great feature. Uh, once again, taking the whole tagging thing another step forward. So who sees tag suggestions when photos that look like you are uploaded? Facebook, as you probably know, has a facial recognition feature, and if photos that it thinks are you are uploaded, it will tell the people who uploaded the photo. It will give suggestions to people who uploaded the photo, and even to people who look at the photo, uh, that it might be you, and it will let them tag it. So I would go with absolutely no one, because this will make it so that it doesn't mean they can't, tag it, but it does mean that Facebook's not going to be suggesting to them that they should tag it or that it's you. You may also want to enable notifications about privacy and security, but other than that, I think that's all we have for you. If you didn't watch the first part of this video where we talk about Facebook's security settings, then you should definitely check that out. Otherwise, be on the lookout for more videos like this moving forward, and thanks for watching.